Hi guys, Vikas over here and this is VR Genius. Guys, today I am with a new video around Raspberry Pi. We will see how to set up a NAS using Raspberry Pi. I hope you are aware of NAS. If not, it stands for Network Address Storage. And in simple terms, we can think of accessing our storage devices like hard disk drives or solid state drives by using the network interfaces like Ethernet or Wi-Fi. And for this make, we are going to use Open Media Vault, which is an open source NAS solution. And this can be a cheaper solution compared to buying a NAS from market, which are actually pretty expensive. So being said that, let's get started guys. Uh, so guys, to start with this, we need to download Open Media Vault image for Raspberry Pi. To do that, just Google Open Media Vault. And by the way, I'll uh, just put a link uh, for that in the description down below. Over here, get into the like sourceforce.net repository. And uh, over here, you can download the latest one or the stable version one. Click on it. And over here, it should start your download. And just wait till it gets finished. Now after download finishes, let's just extract it. Uh, I'm using over here 7G. You can use any software that you are familiar with. And just wait till it gets finished. Now to burn the like disk image onto the flash drive, I am going to use Win32 Disk Imager. You can use any software that you are using. And over here, just select the flash drive and browse the ISO file. Just now we extracted. Select that one and hit the right button. Now let's just wait till the writing operation is completed. Now the write operation has finished, so let's put the SD card onto the Pi and see how to connect the different hardware onto the Pi. So guys, for the setup, we are going to use this Raspberry Pi 2 and we are going to use this SD card that contains Open Media Vault on Raspbian chassis. With that, for storage, I am going to use these two Lenovo 1TB hard drives and to support both the hard drives as well as to provide power to them I am going to use this USB hub over here that is from Apple and to make this hub powered by some external sources I am going to use a cable that has been uh, like made by me for this which will take power from this uh, like GPIOs of Raspberry Pi 2 and it will provide 5 volt supply to the USB hub so I will not be needing any uh, like external power specifically for the USB hub and so let's put up all the components and we'll uh, like get back to PC and we'll check it out how to configure and how to make it work so first let's put up the SD card I'm going to plug this 5 volt supply for the USB hub plug in the USB hub to the Pi power to the USB hub then I'll just put this couple of hard drives over here to the USB hub. So as uh, this hub is uh, like USB 2 but but uh, both hard drives of mine supports USB 3 and that will again slow down the data transfer rate but as the Pi has also not got USB 3 support we are good to go with this or uh, if you are having USB 3 hub you can go with that that might uh, increase your speed of transfer a bit let's connect uh, one ethernet to raspberry pi as well as we'll power it up and after that let's check on pc so guys after connecting everything like i have connected my couple of hard disks to the raspberry pi by using one powered usb hub and 
inserted the required hd card that is containing open media vault to the raspberry pi i have connected one ethernet cable to my network with the raspberry pi and as well as i have powered it off and after powering it off just wait for a couple of minutes and then just you need to find out the ip address that has been taken by the raspberry pi and over here as initially the raspberry pi is configured in dscp we need to find out the ip address that has been taken by pi and to do that we can use couple of methods like we can get into the dscp table of your router that you are using in your network or otherwise we can use a simple tool just like nmap and as i am on windows i am using genmap tool that is for nmap usages and all and to find out the ip i just need to type in the command like nmap minus sn then the starting ip then the ttl and if you are using linux or mac os x you can simply use it by using command line and you can have uh, but you need to have nmap installed into the system then over here you can see the ip that has been taken by the raspberry pi is 192.168.0.5 and as of now it is still in dscp mode so let's open up any web browser that you are compatible with and type in the ip and after typing in the ip you will be presented with an interface like this which uh, like asks you to choose the language that you are comfortable with then username and password so the default username that it comes with is admin and password is open media vault and this admin username is only for the web interface so if you are going for ssh or sftp you need to provide username root but the password remains same that is open media vault then click on login and you'll see something like this with one dashboard and some system information and services showing up it shows the running services and all so before getting into anything let's see if uh, the raspberry pi or the omb is able to detect the hard disk that we have attached with the pi and you can see it is detecting two hard disks that is each of 931.5 gb that is i have attached to one one tb hard disk to the pi so we have no issue with that with the power usb hub and the hard disk so let's first get into settings that is system settings and over here you can define the port that will be used by open media vault for the web interface and the session timeout all those things you can configure if it is required and the most important thing is if you want to change the default password for the web interface you can change over here by selecting new password for it so uh, let me change my password over here i'm just going to do with the default password for me now let's check if we have successfully changed the password now let's log in with the new password that i set earlier and the password has been changed successfully now over here after general settings we get nothing else on here and on date and time you can set your time zone uh, let's say for me it is kolkata scm ntp server for time update and all and we can hit the save button yep yes click on yes okay uh, it is showing the wrong date over here but we'll get into that it might not be having internet connection as my network runs on static ip only to have a internet connection so we can do that uh, later on so let's uh, get into network and over here you'll have general settings like you can change your host name there is open media vault and you can set it to any name let's say uh, i'm going with my pi omb nash that is one okay now again just hit on save click 
can apply after that get into interfaces and uh, over here you can see it shows up the current active interface as I am using Raspberry Pi 2 it doesn't have any other interface other than ETS 0 or the default Ethernet port so if you are using Pi 3 you might be having like Wi-Fi interface also listed over here so let's edit it and make it a static IP so that you can access this later on and it, it will get internet connection over here and this is for my network only if you are interested to run in DSCP you can go with that but each time you need to just search for the IP if you want to access your open media world so to avoid that I am just going to use a static IP that is for my network DNS server now if you are interested you can get with uh, like Wacom LAN but I am not going to use that over here and click on save click on apply yes Okay, it is showing communication failure that might be due as we have changed the IP address right now. So let's get into the set IP address and now leave and you can see the IP address has also changed. And for other network related things you can uh, check out over here. If it is required, you can set up proxy, then different services. You can enable and disable over here. You can set up firewall rules and all. Now, after this, let's get into notification and see what it comes with. And over here, it allows you to send email notification to your email account, but you need to set SMTP server and all settings for your Gmail or whatever mail services that you are using. Uh, so uh, so that it can send you uh, like different notification like if you have set up uh, like file system like smart that it detects error and all your red CPU usage and all those things so it sends you notification depending upon different configurations and all you have set up now getting into power management it uh, whether you can define over here you want to monitor the power of the system and status or not and over here you can have a power button but uh, right now I have set up any so we need to look onto it and over here on schedule jobs you can provide some commands like if you want to reboot it at some time or it you want to shut down after some time or something so you can provide it over here all those things then getting into monitoring it uh, ask you if you want to monitor or the performance and all of your NAS or the open media world you can em enable it uh, so let's enable it then you can have uh, like SSH and SSL certificates and all over here on certificate schedule jobs you can have some commands that will be executed after every like defined time and you can have some repeated jobs over here then on to update management you can uh, like get into like check and it will check for new updates if it is available and after checking of updates and all you can see it is uh, like showing up different updates available for different add-on as well as different libraries uh, so if you are interested you can just go and update it I'm just keeping these things for the tutorial for time being then after that I can get into plugins and it will show you the different plugins and if you want to activate any you can just click on select and you can install it now on OMB extras you again get some plugins and all and you can configure like whatever you want to use like you want stable versions of plugin or you want to use the testing versions and as well as you can uh, like use some reports for flex media server and all the things 
for doctor and all so i'll not get into that then after uh, like from system we get into storage and as we saw earlier the physical disk shows the devices those are connected now we can have wipe up all the data from all hard disks or whatever devices storage devices we have attached to the pipe the smart lets you over here to like check for errors and all of your hard drives or the de uh, storage devices you have connected and i am going to enable it and you can define uh, the check interval right now it is 1800 seconds that is half an hour and i am going to just make it like 6600 that is every one hour i am going to check for the device or disk errors if any and you can say set power mode over here and you, uh, you can uh, like set never sleep standby or ideal so if you set never it if it is uh, like uh, the threshold has come the like time threshold has come it will just check for the errors regardless which state it is like it might be in sleep standby or idle state and it will just use uh, do the required test so i'll get into sleep so if uh, the hard disks or uh, the drives are in sleep mode it will not perform the check now getting out of devices if you want to monitor the devices you can monitor enable it i am setting it for both the devices and uh, if you have like set up your uh, like email notification and all it will send you mail if something happens or it detects some errors then you can have some schedule test like uh, the sort test or self test that is co convenience uh, self test and offline if did test all those things can be set up over here so i am not going with that then again over here you can set the temperature uh, like monitoring and all if your uh, like uh, deviation in temp and if your uh, like hard disk goes beyond certain temperature it will notify you or uh, if it uh, goes into critical state uh, and again you need to define the thresholds for it and if the difference between two instantaneous temperatures goes beyond some threshold level which you have defined over here it will send you notifications so we'll not get into that and uh, under raid management you can create a red 5 red 0 and there are mirror red 1 red 10 or red 6 any configuration you want but uh, over here i have couple of uh, hard disks plugged into it and i am going for mirror but i will not be getting into red because uh, for red you need to plug in your hard disks all the time to the pi and if you one of hard disks is unplugged it will simply not work so i'll not get into red uh, if you are interested you can get into red and over here you can select mirror if you have couple of hard disks okay they are not mounted till yet so they are not showing up over here so let's cancel it and i am not getting into red if you want you can do that now getting into file systems we'll uh, see the different uh, like devices detected by your pi and over here i am going to mount these devices that is first is hard disk drive and the second hard disk drive so get into mount then get into flash memory this is again one add on that has been pre installed and if this is enabled this will not write everything onto your sd card so this might help you to increase the lifetime of your sd card now after checking our storage let's get into access right management and over here you get options like user group and share folders management so under so under user you can create users for your nas and all so let's add one user that is for me then email password and the shell that will be accessible by the particular user so if you 
uh, so if you are interested you can use uh, many users as you want okay click on apply yes and you can change privileges and all so as I, I don't have any shared folder right now so I'm not getting any privileges then you can use uh, like change group settings and all I can create specific user groups for your users and all then getting into shared folders you can share folder over here for the users so let's say we'll have share folder for our first drive that is nash std1 so i'll use everyone read and write save then again i'll add another drive that is for nash std2 this is for the second drive and again i'll only provide access to the administrator so and i'll mention over here this is the backup drive that i am going to use uh, so as i said earlier i'll not be using rate for my backups i'll be using rsync that is we're going to check out later on over here for backups and all so let's save it okay i'll have some comment over here that is main drive click on save so now we have set up our share folders and all you can have uh, like permissions share folder in use you can check out then getting into services you can have something like ftp if you want to act like enable ftp server you can configure over here then if you want to use nfs or the network file system you can go over here then uh, this is uh, something that we are going to use for our backups so this is uh, called as async and over here you can define what you want to back up and how you want to back up so to do that i can add some jobs that for particular this time i want to let's say back up my content from my drive a to b or to some like remote location so for timing i'm going to use local only then i'll like source i'll use hdd1 and i'm going to back it up to hdd2 and i want to do it after like every let's say two hours then uh, you can check out different other available options but uh, so let's save it on click on apply yes uh, let's check our share folder exists or not yeah so they are existing so i think i have done so then let's get into SMB that will let us to share or use the NASH from any of like computer in our network. So to do that it is already enabled. Then over here you can define the shares that you want to share with the users. So get over here and I'm going to use NASH HDD1 for sharing shared. drive I'm going to use guest allowed then you can have all other things check out over here click on apply yes okay now after that like you will have some options like SNMP 
then you can configure SSH, you can configure TFTP over here. You are not getting into all of the things. And on the diagnostics, you get dashboard that will show you your system health parameters and all. I have added this one that is the file systems. Okay, if you want, you can add any other interfaces that you are interested in. Uh, sorry, other dashboards, you can say. Then after that, you can have some system information, system logs, different services running over here. Okay. Then let's get into shared folders and you can see the shared folders in use. That is NAS HDD1 and NAS HDD2 that is being used by different services. Now as we have set up everything, uh, let's check out on our PC if you are able to access the NAS from File Explorer. So we have set up backups and all so everything good to go. Let's open up Windows Explorer and over here just get into your network and you will see something like pi ohm v nash one so this is a name that i uh, have given to this and which you can check check out over here on general settings uh, sorry network and you can check the host name whatever you have given so from there i can just click on this and we'll be able to see the folder that has been shared by the NASH or what we have shared in the configurations so that's so that's all with this guys we saw how like different configuration we set up backup with actually over here used mirroring using rsync not using red and we saw different options those are present on open mirror world as well as we checked how to connect more drives and all to the raspberry pi in hardware and all and hope you have enjoyed this video if so put the thumbs up button and if you have not subscribed yet to my channel you can definitely subscribe to it for later updates and videos like this so see you next time with my next content till then goodbye